This video is sponsored by Simply Safe. There's no safe like Simply Safe. Today, we're back at the farm and we're gonna work on the Carmen Ghia. Now specifically, I wanna start working on the last section of major metal work that I have to do and it's the entire back end of the car. So it is a lot, but I have a new tool. This is the metal fab from Xtool, and honestly, it's nuts. It's a laser welder, a laser cleaner, a laser cutter that can cut like steel and stuff, and that big box is a CNC. This thing's not even out yet. They reached out to me and asked me if I would test it out. Not even asked me to sell it to you, just to try it out. And if you want to find out all the details about price and capability and all that stuff, it's gonna be available in the Kickstarter, which I'll link down below because it launches on Kickstarter today. Now, the thing that I actually care about is whether this is a worthwhile tool to have for automotive restoration. I mean, all of the Ghia. I've got a lot of welding to do. I've got a lot of cutting to do. I've got rust removal to do. And this one tool should be able to do all those things, but we won't know until we try it. So what's next on the Ghia? Well, basically I have to replace the entire back end from about here down all the way around between the wheels has to be completely replaced. Luckily, I do have panels to replace all of that, but it's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, I think nine panels. And so I have to take all of it off and put all of it back on in a way that fits together correctly so that this thing will fit on the chassis and the trunk will fit in place. So, you know. Not a whole lot. I've been struggling with this for quite a while because I don't know where to start. If I take the middle pieces out, I can't put them back in because the things they get welded to also have to come out. But if I start on the outsides, I'm gonna be welding those two pieces that are not gonna be fixed, really, and then tearing out things that they need to be fixed to to replace. I just don't know where to start, but I think I might have an idea. I've got these two panels, this one over here on the floor that's actually gonna stay. It's the one thing that's gonna stay in place because it's fine. The one on this side is completely rotted through and that's where the battery sits. And I think that actually might be the place to start. It's in the middle of everything, but I have a point of reference to measure off of that's not gonna move. So if I can get that one taken out and weld it back into the few pieces that are staying, I think it starts to give me a place to build from. I think, I don't really know. It's only welded right around here and then right here to the outer panel. And those two things are gonna stay. So I think I can just cut this off, pull this out and put a new one back in the same spot. And that will probably work. But I don't know, I, I, hmm, I don't know. And I'm gonna do that, but I also really wanna show you the laser welder. So let's do that first. All right, so this is the welding gun and it's got a wire feeder that feeds out wire, welding wire, just like a MIG would. But the cool thing is it has a red visible laser that shoots out onto the wire so you can see the pinpoint where it's gonna weld. That right there is already better than every welder that I've ever used because you can know exactly where it's gonna happen. And that's cool, but other than that, you don't have to do anything. It has two triggers. You hold that one for grip and then you pull this one and it feeds the wire out and pushes the gun backward at the right rate to get a perfect weld beat. I'm serious, It do just watch, this is crazy. There we go. That's crazy right there. Truth be told, it took me a few times to figure out the fact that I didn't have the gas turned on and I had the wrong thickness of metal. But once I get past that and I got this thing set up correctly, that right there is a fantastic weld. Better than anything I could do with a MIG welder. And it basically did that for me. It pushed the gun backwards to make a straight line. It penetrated all the way through and would be perfectly acceptable for me if I was working on a body panel. Now, of course, the welding is gonna be awesome. I'm excited about that. But another thing I'm excited about is the cleaning. Check this out. So you can take the wire feeder and the tip off, and then you put on a different tip, and you're good to go. <sighs> it's gotta find something rusty. Ooh, that's pretty rusty. Yeah, let's do that. That is very rusty. So we're gonna clean this. I did some cleaning tests, and it's super cool, but it makes a mess with smoke and stuff. So I've got a nice big open door behind me that I'm going to open wide. I mean, that's pretty awesome. 
And I also learned that you can etch concrete with it. Check that out. Hmm. That's pretty cool. I just wanted to try those things out. They're both pretty awesome, but I'm about to run out of welding gas. So for today, I'm gonna to focus on trying to get that panel out so we can actually start making some progress. Well, it changed my mind, which shouldn't be a surprise, but basically I got to looking at that battery tray and I think a lot of it is actually salvageable. The parts that are connected to the rest of the car and there's no reason to redo those seams so I can cut down the one that I have and just patch it in. But because of that, it actually changed what I thought I needed to start with. And so I'm going underneath and trying to get this piece out. We're just gonna work from there instead. got the battery tray mostly fit. A little bit of trimming left to do, but before I can weld anything together, I've got to clean the surfaces. There's a bar that goes right underneath this thing that has a ton of rust on it, which means we get to use the cleaning feature of the metal fab. Oh, gotta hit the button. I always forget. This video is sponsored by Simply Safe, who I've been using to secure my home for a really long time. Recently, we needed to add some more visibility to our backyard, so I ordered a few more cameras. And this new camera allows me to add Active Guard outdoor protection. This is where the monitoring agents can actually keep an eye on your camera and make sure that there are no potential threats trying to get into your home. If they see somebody that should not be there, they can actually see them and talk to them through the camera, plus they can set off alarms or turn on lights, and if they need to, they'll call the police for you. So here's what you do. You go to simplysafe.com slash ILTMS, and then you pick out the items that you need for your home. You get the cameras you need, indoor and outdoor. You get motion sensors and water sensors and smoke detectors and all of the different pieces, and they show up at your house in a box. You can set the entire system up by yourself in about 30 minutes. It's super easy to do. After that, you can use the app to actually look at all your cameras and set up more devices. Plus, you're gonna wanna set up monitoring. It's only about a dollar a day, it's really inexpensive, but it's a great way to protect your home and the people and the things inside of it. That monitoring has no contract, so you can cancel it at any time, although you probably won't want to. And they've got a 60 day money back guarantee. So if you're not happy with your system, you can have your money back. Simply Safe has been voted the best home security system five years in a row. So it's good stuff, it's a cool company, and I think you'll be really happy with it. So here's what you need to do to get 50% off your Simply Safe system. Go to simplysafe.com slash ILTMS or hit the link down in the description. Then you can go over and customize the system just for you. Be sure to go check them out and huge thanks to Simply Safe for sponsoring this video. There's no safe like Simply Safe. Couple of thoughts on the cleaning. One, it's pretty awesome, especially for small areas. Like you wouldn't use that to clean a big area because a flap disc would work way better, except for the little places where a flap disc couldn't fit. In fact, that was one of the really cool things that I was able to do. There's a little spot in there where two pieces of metal are welded together and they make like a little cave and it's full of rust. I could shoot the laser down inside that cave and get rid of all the rust on the surface. Now I can spray some rust preventative in that same area and it should lock it down pretty well. So for cleaning, I think it's awesome for small areas or for hard to reach areas, especially like Something like this, like an old rusty hammer. Getting a flap disc into this area might be kind of difficult. I bet we could do this with the laser pretty easily. I mean, that's pretty cool. All right, back to the gear. The thing that I'm actually having trouble with is getting these tiny little patches to fit in the hole. It takes me a really long time, more than I would like to admit, but I think I have the first one ready to weld in. We're gonna test putting this piece in and we just wanna tack weld around so we don't get it too hot. Luckily, the metal fab has a tack weld setting that will control how long it welds. So you can pull the trigger and it's just like And you can set that based on the thickness of the material. And that sounds pretty awesome. Also, it has a wire feeder so you can actually like manually, that's awesome. Okay, anyway, here we go. Whoa. <laughs> oh, oh my gosh, all right. What in the world? That is the smallest tack ever. Hold on, I gotta show you this. That right there is a tack weld, and it is so tiny. 
I'm not sure that it penetrated all the way through and it may not be the right size, the right length of time, but there's one right there, right there, and right there. I'm just gonna keep going around and see if that's enough to hold it in place. Oh, that's crazy. <laughs> I mean, honestly, this is gonna be perfect for body. Very, very tiny welds. Like, my finger up next to them. Those are way smaller than I would be able to personally do with any other welder. And you can't even feel them, honestly. But that piece is, is held in place. Here's the real test. How does it do with a bead? I burned through it because I had the setting on the too thick of metal, so I'll have to fix that. Oh, now we're getting somewhere, I think. Okay, so there's a wire feed on and off switch that I accidentally had turned off this entire time. There we go. Okay. Oh, now we're talking. Now we're talking. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay, so here's the deal. I accidentally had the automatic wire feed button turned off instead of on. Not sure how I did that, but that was causing the welder to actually burn through that metal. And then once I turned it on, the wire fed out and actually pushed the gun back at the right rate and left a bead. So luckily I did those tests in a place that nobody will ever see. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish that one up and then I'll do the next patch and hopefully that one will actually look a lot better. Whoa, so I knew going into this video that I would not be completing anything. I wouldn't be finishing the entire back end or even a section of it because I'm trying out a new tool. But man, it's taken me an obnoxiously long time to finish two patches and they don't even look good. And that's not a fault of the machine. It's honestly my skill level or lack thereof. But there is something really interesting about the gun that I just noticed. So the wire feeder on this thing actually goes at like about a 45 degree angle to the laser, which is very different from a MIG where they're both basically coming from the same place. On a MIG torch, you can take the end of it and you can point it in any direction that you want. And wherever that arc is happening, there's also wire being fed in the same direction. But with this gun, you've basically got a triangle. And so you're trying to get it to do the right thing in the right direction while it's pushing you back. Now this isn't a bad thing or like a problem with the machine. It's just a different way to think about trying to get from one place to another because you've got the gun actually moving you in one direction and you have to handle the twist and the turn and the lift. And you just have to think about it a little bit differently. And I'm not quite there yet. And you're probably saying to yourself, Bob, it's a new tool that you've never used before. You probably should have set up some tests on a workbench so that you could actually lay things out and figure out how the tool worked in different situations before you jumped into actually using it on a project. But it's me, so I didn't do that. So anyway, back to the work. Come on. It's so close. Ah, that's not it. I gotta be honest, I got really, really frustrated with the patching part of this. But after I got past that, getting everything else fit up, I actually think it's gonna work. I'm gonna be able to get the pieces back to where they should be. And I think what it boils down to is that I've just been doing metal work on this car for so long that I'm just tired of it. I'm ready to move on to something else. Luckily, we're making some progress. So the new battery tray, I think is all fit up and ready to be welded in. And the reason I'm excited about that is that it's progress, but also because all of the weld lines I have here are pretty straight. They're gonna be a little bit easier, I think, to test on rather than the patches that I was doing before. So here we go. Wish me luck. You gotta be freaking kidding me. Um, all right. It turns out that the default settings for the wire feed are actually just way too high for what I'm doing at least. And they were controlling the gun. They were pushing the gun in a way that was not me pushing the gun. So 
I went in and adjusted the settings. Now, the cool thing is on this machine, you can actually save settings as a profile. So you can set up different profiles for different types of material, different thicknesses, and you can just go back and it will set all your settings back for you. So now I've got a profile for the Gia sheet metal that I think is dialed in. That's what it's supposed to do. Nice. But the cool thing is being able to set up those different settings and recall them will probably save me a lot of time in the long term. I won't have to go back and fiddle with knobs and stuff. Just got to get them set right the first time. All right, now we are ready to start working on the outside body panels. And this matters a lot more, honestly. It doesn't really matter what the inside of the trunk looks like or the inside of the body that nobody's ever going to see again. But this stuff out here is what makes the whole car look cool or not. So I got to take my time. You know, to this day, I don't know why I chose this car as my first real car project, my first restoration. I mean, I do know why. I love the Carmagia. I love the shape of it, but the shape is part of the problem. It doesn't have a straight line on the entire car. And this one in particular was especially rusty. I could have started with something way further along and had a lot less metal work to do, but here we are. So if you decide to start working on cars, maybe get something really boxy with a lot of flat panels and straight lines. I think that'd be a lot easier. For now, I've got this piece just about ready to fit up. So I'm gonna get it clamped in place and then we can actually test out the welding on the outside body panels, which I'm pretty excited about. I got some good practice in back here and I've got this lined up and tacked. And now I'm gonna try to do like a good legit weld across there. I also adjusted the wire feeder again and it made a huge difference. Here we go. Okay, we gotta move faster. I'm getting there. Ooh, all right. Now it did take me a little while to get the hang of welding with a laser, but honestly, I think that was more about me than the machine. I was thinking of it like a MIG welder and that's just like trying to learn to use a TIG welder and thinking of it like a MIG welder. It's a different tool with a different technique. And after changing the way I was thinking about it and adjusting some settings and then practicing some technique, it started to click. And now after a hard couple of weeks, I have new body panels. I have about half of the back end done and that feels super good. If you wanna find out more about the Metal Fab, it is on Kickstarter right now. My link for it will be down in the description. Go find out all the details. You'll definitely be seeing more of it here because I have several videos planned with it. Thanks for hanging out with me on this one. I'll catch you next time. It takes me, uh, an, <laughs> takes me an embarrassing late. It takes me an embarrassing long, Embarrassing. It takes me a really long time. Link to the Kickstarter are down below. Link to the Kickstarter are. It is a fantastic piece of machinery and I am gonna get better at it. <laughs> but I'll catch you on the...